Hey, what's going on guys? So today is day one of uh, Siege of the Atlas and Arc Nemesis League. So I decided to share with you some of my discoveries about the league. And in case if you are wondering about my character progress, that's gonna be tomorrow. I'm gonna talk about day one and day two about my progression. But just to give you a little uh, sneak peek, I right now have one Exalt, 170C, and I have pretty much every piece of uh, gear I wanted. I have 16 Fleshcrafter, uh, the Draconing, so I'm already uh, using Scala Mages, so I am doing pretty nice, and I am uh, starting to do the red maps now, right now. But again, more on that tomorrow. Today I want to focus on the League mechanic. So. First, let me show you an example of a league mechanic in a map. So I'm gonna do two examples. So the first one is gonna be a little bit uh, simpler version, how you can do the league mechanic. And second map is gonna be doing the league mechanic a little bit more complicated way. So I, now I encountered the first altar. So what I'm gonna do here is I have the Leak mechanic button, or you can click on this thing and you're also gonna uh, see this tab. And by the way, if you don't know, you can go to your option UI and there is a new, no, not UI input, and there is a new thing which is called, uh, let me quickly find it, it is here, Arc Nemesis Inventory. So you can bind it to whatever you want. So I have it at B, so now when I press B and wherever I am, I can check my League Mechanic tab. And now I'm gonna do the first altar. So in case you don't know how this works, you basically put one of the tokens and this monster is gonna drop that reward. And then I'm gonna go to the second one and put the second reward over here. And this one is gonna drop the first uh, one's rewards and the second one. So you always want to uh, have prepared the tokens with uh, in number of four and you always want the first one to be the best reward then second one to be decent rewards and the last two I most of the time will use them as kind of a filler just to have the additional two encounters but I am not really wasting any good rewards so I'm gonna do here gargantuan for one uh, chaos so I mean chaos the currency rewards the second one of divination and third and fourth one with just armor, mysterious and jewelry. So let's do the first one. There are monsters pops out and I'm just gonna kill it. And the tokens uh, drop from just any magic on or rare monsters almost anywhere in the world, especially in the Atlas. But I do believe you can still find them in things like uh, lab, uh, labyrinths. So now I'm gonna go to the second encounter. And now I'm gonna do the malediction. So again, I'm gonna get both of the rewards. And the monster is gonna be stronger right now. Oh, and I got just randomly a scarab. Then the sec third one, Frostweaver. Again, I'm just using this to proc the previous rewards. So divination and the currency one. Done. And now, last one is here. Dynamo. So this is uh, the hardest one. And it is done. So the rewards, rewards were not too crazy, but you still could get some uh, decent um, rewards from it. So now, let me talk a bit about how you can make more from this uh, league mechanic. So let's look at the uh, tokens. So when you use these tokens in uh, uh, statues, you can also read here that they are used in certain recipes. So what that means is basically if you use, for example, Echoist and so Conduit, and if they have some kind of recipe uh, and uh, both of them are used in, as you can see here, in mirror image recipe. So if you use them in the encounter, you're gonna get the new token from out of it, which is gonna be called mirror image. So first, at first I was trying to discover recipes on my own, but then someone linked me 
the spreadsheet uh, in my Twitch chat and here it is and here you can read all of the uh, recipes that are currently in the game. This uh, spreadsheet is not perfect because it doesn't show you the rewards you get from them but it's still something and I expect a lot of people will make a new and better spreadsheet uh, with time into, into the league. So as you can see this is pretty complicated like if you look at something like Kitava Touched the uh, recipe for it is Tukuhama Touch, Abraf Touch, Corruptor and Cor Detonator and to get Tukuhama for example you need to go over here and Tukuhama needs another three and then you look at something like Executioner and Executioner is over here and it needs Frenzied and Berserker. So there are a lot of complicated uh, recipes, but then at the same time, if you do these recipes, you can make much, much more from the league mechanic. So there are basically two ways you can do it. You can do it either simple way and don't really, like, you really care about the recipes and just get some simple uh, rewards, or you can start figuring out the best recipes and go for them and then get some crazy rewards. And if you are wondering uh, what are the rewards these things are giving, you can also go to PoEDB. And then, by the way, I'm going to link these two things in the description. And here you can read all of the rewards. So, for example, Innocence Touched would be free currency rewards. And it also says all rewards types are currency. So what that would mean is that if you go and put something like that as a first reward, then second one, uh, for example, so conduit is cartographer, but uh, because it says all rewards are currency, it will transform this cartographer into the currency. So you can probably start thinking there are some uh, crazy things you can do. If you go for something that gives free rewards, let me find it, Storm Strider. And there are other striders like uh, uh, Frost Strider and Flame Strider, and all of them give free just some bad uh, rewards but if you combine it with all rewards are currency then you will get three currency rewards from the first one from the second one you would get six currency rewards from the third one you would get a nine and fourth one twelve if all of them give some kind of free random currency so you can probably uh, see right now how can you make more out of it so as an example what i did earlier i did manage to create the uh, where it is Brian King touched and it says rewards are rolled six additional times choosing the rarest result so if uh, you have let's say a currency reward as a first uh, token then you use this as a second one then second one is gonna drop also the currency from the first one and they are gonna be rolled six times so if what that basically means if the game says, oh, it dropped Transmutation Orb, and it rolled it rolls its second time, and then it says, oh, it dropped actually Alteration Orb, then it's gonna choose Alteration Orb, and roll third time, and fourth time, fifth time, and sixth time, and choose the rarest outcome. So there's basically more chances to get something nice like Divination, uh, Divine Orbs, or the Exalted Orbs. So this is a pretty good one, but obviously it is a very complicated one. It's not as complicated as some of the bottom ones, but it still requires a decent amount of other tokens. Uh, so what I did again is I got the Brand King touched and the... Uh, where is it? I can't find it here. Shakari touched, which says all rewards types are unique, which is not that crazy. Uh, unix obviously uh, are not the best rewards, probably something like Innocence Touch would be better, but I just uh, wasn't able to complete the recipe for Innocence Touch yet. So I got the Shakari touched and I used this as a first uh, token. So first, uh, re first reward was just one unique item, which is whatever. But then as the second one, I used Brand King, which means that the uh, Shakari transformed f these three chest rewards into the uniques. So the second encounter dropped uh, four uniques and all of them were rolled six times, which means uh, all four of the uniques were uh, decent rarity. 
Then for the fire rewards, I use just something random, uh, like Strider for three additional uh, rewards. So at that point, third encounter dropped seven uniques, and again, all of them were rolled six times. And for the last thing, I also use another Strider, like a weapon, and the last encounter dropped 10 unique items. And again, all of them were rerolled six times, which basically means the last encounter dropped like 60 uniques, but it just chose the best outcomes out of it. So in total, it dropped something around like 120 uh, uniques, but it chose the 21, 22 outcomes and only dropped 20 out of that, if I'm making any sense right now. Uh, but you can go even further with that. So what you could do, let's replace the uniques with something like uh, currency. So you could use as a first one, innocence, you could go for free currency. Then you could go for Kitava, which says rewards are doubled. So you from this f second encounter, you would drop six currency items. Then as a third thing, you would go for Brian King, which would also transform the uh, chest rewards into currency. So from the third encounter, you would drop, actually it would be doubled. So it would be from the second one, it would be three plus one from this times two. So second encounter would drop eight uh, currency. Then the third one would be eight plus six because this would also be double. So that would be 14 currency and all of them would be rolled six times. And then for the last one, you could go probably for something like Tukohama, which is another free rewards, which would be changed into the currency and also they would be rolled four times. So for the fourth and the last encounter, you would get, I actually got lost like 14 plus three times two. So uh, 20 uh, rewards and all of them would be rolled 10 times because of the Brian King and Tukohama. So you can see how crazy some of these recipes uh, can be, but um, obviously it requires a lot of time to figure them out. So these three mechanics actually remind me a little bit of synthesis because in synthesis we were getting decent rewards from just doing the bridges, if anyone remembers them. But if someone would figure out the combination, how to make the right pathways with the bridges to the nice rewards, uh, someone would uh, make much, much more out of them. So it is a little bit of delayed reward mechanic with decent rewards uh, while you are progressing it with the recipes. And also there is a lot of uh, space management, like in synthesis, we had 10 slots for the bridges. Now we have this limited inventory for the tokens. So it is actually becoming a little bit of a struggle. So I no longer pick up uh, like uh, bad things. For example, Frostweaver is very common. So I started to just pick up like one of it and just keep it. And if I drop the second one, I just, just uh, keep it on the ground. I don't really need them. But things like uh, Gargantuan, which is pretty nice one because it drops currency. I always pick it up. And obviously there are things like the Bombardier is actually pretty rare, so I am keeping it. So now just to show you how the uh, recipe uh, recipes work, I'm going to do the second encounter. Mm, let me go to some small map, like Belfry. And I'm going to do these four things, and I'm going to explain to you, to you what it's gonna do. So here's the first encounter. So here I dropped double hasted and hasted is pretty common, but I actually don't have hasted. So I'm gonna just pick one of them and Stormweaver is also pretty common. So I'm just gonna keep it on the ground. I don't have space for it, but obviously at the beginning you would pick up all of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do Echoist and so Conduit. And if you look at the uh, recipes, you can search for the Echoist and, and so Conduit, it will give mirror image. And mirror image is a pretty nice thing because it gives Scarab rewards and rewards are rolled two times. So this is 
uh, I would say like a medium tier recipe, which is still pretty nice. So I'm gonna go for Echoes first, because again, this has currency rewards and Cardo Crafter uh, as a second one. So the first encounter is just gonna drop a currency. Now let me search for the second one. I'm also just gonna skip every other monsters just to make it quicker. Here is the second one. So now I am gonna go the soul conduit and now because of the recipe the mirror image, which is this thing, will drop from it. So here you can see mirror image. And now for the third and fourth encounter, you can use something as a, just kinda as a filler if you want to, or you can do the other recipe. So for the, uh, Necromancer, there is a Bombardier and Overcharge recipe. So now I will use Overcharge and Bombardier and the order doesn't matter. And the Necromancer is not that great. It gives just a mysterious reward, but it also gives uh, rewards or two additional times. Uh, but it is used for uh, other nice recipes. So some of them are good because they just give uh, nice rewards. And some of them are good because they are just used for more advanced recipes and now the fourth one and now I am gonna do get the third uh, result and by the way if for example something like uh, Bombardier is used on two recipes Actually, this is a bad example. If you have something like so conduit and it's used on two recipes, if you place it here and you combine with Echoist, you're gonna get the uh, reward, I mean the new token. But if there is a second recipe, let's say there would be recipe that combines it with uh, Bombardier, uh, now you would not get the token because you already got a token from so conduit. So, conduit. so maximum you can get from uh, one full encounter, you can get uh, two recipes completed. And now I got the Necromancer thing. And then the Necromancer, again, I can use... To, I got this Necromancer and now I can use Necromancer to combine it, make the Corpse Detonator and then Corpse Detonator can be used uh, for Kitav attached, or I can also use Necromancer for uh, the Soul Eater or the Empowering Minions. And Empowering Minions is used for Solaris Touched and Lunaris Touched, which is used later for the Innocence Touched. So it is a bit complicated. But now, just to give you some simple examples of simple recipes to go for, if you don't want to get too much into this, I highly recommend doing the Assassin uh, recipe because it's Deadeye and Vampiric, and Vampiric is Fossil Rewards, and Deadeye is... Uh, I don't actually remember, it's something random. Deadeye is just Jewelry and Chest. But if you combine it, you get Assassin, and Assassin is uh, two currency rewards. So, uh, as you can see here, two currency, which is a pretty nice one. Uh, the other one is the uh, Gargantua one with Vampiric, and you get Rejuvenating. This is actually probably the best, like, uh, out of the simple recipes because you get Gargantuan, which is currency, Vampiric, which is fossil, so you will just drop currency and fossil and you're gonna get Rejuvenating. And Rejuvenating uh, gives also currency and also rerolls the rewards one additional time. So it's later you can use Rejuvenating, combine it with something like Gargantuan and maybe a mirror image probably you would use mirror image as a first because this is the scar up then you would use rejuvenating because it gives currency and it also adds another reroll then you would use gargantuan and as a last thing 
maybe something like Juggernaut for the Harbinger. So that would be like a simple uh, recipes. And the last of the simple recipes, I would say, is the mirror image. It is a pr the Echoes and Silicondis are pretty rare, but if you get them, do it, because you're gonna get mirror image. And mirror image is no longer used in that many recipes. The only recipe it is being used in is the Innocence Touch, and it's very compli complicated recipe, so uh, you're gonna have much harder time getting these things uh, rather than getting mirror image. So you can just use it for whatever you want, just to get some additional rewards. You don't have to save it for the recipes. So again, mirror image is very nice because it gives scarabs, rejuvenating for currency, gargantuan, which is the simple one for currency, and there are a few other ones. Right now I do have uh, one Kitava touched left and I'm working on getting the Innocence uh, touched and I am missing the Solaris and Lunaris touched. And for the Lunaris I do already have Frost Rider and Invulnerable. I am missing Empowering Minions, which means I have to make this one. And I already have the Necromancer and Gargantuan, which means I am missing only Executioner. And for the Executioner I am missing the Frenzy. So as soon as I do get Frenzy, I pretty much have the Innocence Touch. So some of these can be uh, pretty uh, rare. And for example, uh, something like Brian King Touch. This is actually a very simple recipe, but it requires Ice Prison, and Ice Prison is the Permafrost. And I actually so far only did drop twice Permafrost. It is actually extremely rare, or maybe I'm just unlucky. But you can probably see why some of the small ones are just something you leave on the ground, like Frost Weaver. It's gonna be pretty common to get it, but something like perm Permafrost, you want to pick it up, even though it doesn't give that great of a rewards. It is used for some of the best recipes. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna be it for this video. Obviously, there is still more to figure out. Probably there are some crazy combinations, like Trend Cord is uh, really nice because it gives. Uh, monsters minions randomly chosen rewards you can combine it with something like rewards are doubled and then uh, roll additional six times or four times so there are some crazy things we can do so we will still have to figure out some of them so thanks for watching and see you next time